Hi guys, it's Jamie and I was challenged with making a juicer for a student this week and I really haven't done one before, not in earnest. So I created one and I would th I thought I would show you my design. What? Yeah, it's off center. So a um, couple things that are about this that I like is that one, it has the holes here. So then I can put my, you know, juicer right over a cup and have the juice go right in. So for this, you're going to need some kind of round form and um, you can use, you know, a ball if you have one, like a tennis ball. Um, I just happen to have this half sphere here, which works. And um, I have a six inch slab of clay for the base. I have um, a four and five eighths circle, which is a little bit thicker. Um, than I normally roll. So maybe think about 3 16 to 3 8 maybe thickness because you're going to be carving into this. And then lastly I have a small piece for the bottom of this. So first things first is that you want to get this form going. So this one before you can attach it to the bottom piece needs to be set up. So I'm going to place it on top of my sphere and just um, push it around and shape it into this half sphere. Once that is done, I'm going to cut a dart into it. Not a dart, really. I'm going to cut a slice out of it. Maybe it's a dart. I don't know. And that's one and a half inches. So from the top... Now, before I cut that out, one of the things I like to do is just press on the inside because I want it to be pointy. So I'm just creating a point. All right, now that I have the point, I know from where to cut, and I have my measurements here, I'm gonna cut out a slice like that. Next, I'm just gonna fold it over like this and press in like the roundness that this form gives it. So, I mean, I could have taken a circle and folded it into a cone and then pushed out the sides from that, but I like the graceful fullness here um, for this form, for this particular project. All right, now since I have um, done this and I pushed out in here, I want to reinforce it because I'll be carving later. So I'm just going to take a bit, like a pea size, of clay and shove it back in there. Next thing I'm going to do is add the bottom. Now this is something I do similarly to my mugs on their bottoms is I take a pony roller and I just roll it in to make sure that the where I've joined is really firmly together. The next thing I'm going to do is roll on the outside. Once you have that trapped air, you can do a lot more shaping on the outside and smoothing if you want. I'm not concerned with that right now. The last thing that I want to do, well, my next step is, so now I've, I've gone around it like this, and I've gone around it like this. Now I want to go at a bevel. So why the bevel? I, I like how it kind of comes back in here. And you're going to see I'm going to push out, so you'll see that emphasized. Next, I'm going to take a small hole cutter and put it in the center. Now I'm going to put my finger in here and just start pushing out a little bit. There's nothing more to be done at this point other than to let it set up. So now we come to this form, and I am going to press this into foam. It's a five inch circle and I'm going to use a Fahe yogurt container which is um, a seven ounce container and I'm going to press that into the circle, into the center of it. So when I do this I need to take a little bit of plastic on top and I like to create like a little bunch like that and then I'm going to center it press. Next, turn it over, take a ball, and roll it. 
See, if you didn't do that bunch of plastic, you're going to have a problem with this step. So now we have the shape of the basin. And um, this also needs to set up before we do anything else. So I'm going to come back once my other pieces are ready to go and continue the video. Back, and I have my um, top piece ready to carve. And the first thing I'm going to do is make some lines. So I'm going to divide it into half. So my first line, I bisect the piece. Kind of like cutting a pie, I guess. So I'm going to do it into four quadrants. And then I do, I split those quadrants. And then lastly, I do a half um, line. So I'm just going to go around and mark a halfway between. You carve whatever you want. The point is you need to have a rough edge that the juice will catch, or the orange or grapefruit will catch on. All right, now that I have my lines, and it's important at this point that the piece has set up. So you, it's not going to be successful carving um, when it's sloppy wet. To do my carving, I have um, tools like this, um, loop tools. But I start off with the big guy. So this is um, just a Kemper carve, or trimming tool. And so I follow the line down and I dig in and I create an edge there. So I'm going to go around and do all the big lines first. I don't know why. It just feels better for me to do that. So you can see it's starting to take shape. And if you need to, you can get your fingers in there and press out if you press too hard somewhere. Or if you press way too hard and you uh, need to fill it and patch it, you could do it that way too. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so now I'm ready to attach it to the other form. For attaching, the, what I'm going to do next is add my drainage holes. Okay, so if you look at where I marked, the top of the this circle is at the top here. And then I know that I'm going to, I'm going to put a hole right here. And that's where I'm going to know, you don't want to have a trapped form anyway. You need to have an air hole. But I think I'm going to open it bigger once I get this attached. kind of see where I've attached here, here at the bottom, so I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. On my first one, I left the hole small, and then when it came to washing this thing, I just, it was a nightmare. So I really want to have it open so that the air can escape, water can escape when washing. And now is my time to really press on this seam to make sure that it's really in there well. So that's the bottom. My last thing to do would be once this sets up um, and it is leather, um, well, when it's dry, then maybe I'll come back with a scrubby and get some of the soft, you know, soften it down a little bit. That's it for now. So one of the things that I forgot to show you, <laughs> which is really important, um, is adding feet. So I'm just going to take the little piece that I carved out from the center and I'm going to roll a coil and then cut equal pieces off of that. This is what they look like here underneath. Okay, I think I'm just going to let those go for right now. I think they look alright.